What you see here is us using the Crow Panel 1.28 inch HMIES P32 rotary display to remotely control a servo connected to the Crow Panel Advanced 7 inch HMI. As you can see, we can easily use the 1.28 inch rotary screen to remotely control the servo on the Advanced HMI achieving smooth 180 degree rotation. Whether you drag the slider on the screen or turn the rotary knob on the display, the control effect is the same. When you switch to the volume interface, the system allows you to conveniently adjust the playback volume of the Advanced HMI in real time. Whether you choose to slide the on-screen slider with your fingertip or rotate the physical knob on the rotary display, both methods provide the same smooth and precise control over the sound level. In addition to the 1.28-inch rotary display, there is also a larger 2.1-inch version. With this display, you can control the brightness of the LED connected to it simply by sliding the on-screen slider or turning the rotary knob. From the dimmest setting to the brightest, and then back down again, the brightness can be adjusted with ease. You can also remotely control the double US2812 LED strip connected to the Advance HMI by sliding the on-screen slider or turning the rotary knob, making the LEDs light up one after another with smooth and seamless transitions. All of these rotary display functions are fully customizable. If you have more creative or playful ideas, you can build upon our code and modify it to bring your own DIY designs to life. Now let's take a look at how to set up our devices and ensure all related functions work properly. For the 1.28 inch rotary display and its connection with the advanced HMI start by connecting the power cable to the 1.28 inch display, which also serves as its programming cable. Next, for the advanced, simply connect the servo and the speaker that will be controlled and remember to switch to the appropriate mode during operation. For the 2.1 inch rotary display, first connect the LED light and then power on the rotary display. This order is for safety reasons. After that, connect the double US2812 LED strip to the Advance HMI for control. With these steps, our hardware setup will be complete and ready to use. Next, let's look at some important notes on the software part. First, open the code we provided. Here, We'll take the 1.28 inch rotary screen code as an example and open the main code file using the Arduino IDE. Then go to the preferences menu under the file tab and set the library file compilation path for this code. Next, change the ESP32 version to 2.0.14 because some of the libraries in our code require this version. After that, configure the running environment of the code. Click Tools and follow my configuration options to set it up properly. One thing to note, in the Partition Table options, you won't see the Elecro S3 option. That's because the system's default partition tables cannot support the required code size for compilation and flashing. We need to expand the partition table so that the entire code can run correctly. Follow the path shown in the video and replace the contents of the board's point text file under the ESP32 version folder with the board's point text file we provided. Next, go into the Tools folder, then into the Partitions folder, and copy the Alecro S3.CV file we provided into it. With this done, your partition table will support compiling and flashing the code. Finally, close all the Arduino IDE windows you have opened and reopen the code. Now you'll see the new partition table option Elecro S3 that you just added. Select Elecro's 3. With that, your code flashing environment is ready. Just click upload to flash the code. After waiting for a while, you'll be able to use the functions of your rotary screen. That's all for this video. See you in the next one.